uh, I mean, yeah, when I say this, I would, I'm, 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 I can cry about this, actually. To tell a mother who is in her early labor when she's having to go through her PV examinations. You've heard this probably. You can't take this. How are you going to give birth to a child? And that's such a wrong thing to say. In that moment, especially when she might, you know, when she is in labor. And that's exactly the opposite of what you should do to her. Now we know about it. Now I know about it. This is the Birth Agni podcast. The fire that brings us alive. That burns myths and opens a channel of authentic natural birth stories. This show debunks the many myths of the medicalized births, showcases the plethora of choices a pregnant couple can make to embark on their empowered birth journey. I'm Divya Kapoor, a certified birth and lactation counselor and an aspiring traditional birth attendant. Let's get the flames blazing high. In this two-part series, we discuss Aparna Ajayan's birth story. She is a prenatal yoga instructor who comes from Bangalore and she chose a birth center for her first birth experience, wherein she was cared for in a midwifery model. She says she learned out of experience how her thoughts affected labor, especially pre-labor or early labor, which we discuss at length in part one of this episode today. In part two, we go ahead and explore the rest of her laboring journey, which stalls at one point. How did that happen? and how things progress from there on. We discuss in part two of this episode that is coming up in the next week. But before we begin, we are thrilled to announce that we are coming again in January with our third prenatal village after two successful prenatal village meetings earlier this year. This is a space where you meet uh, birth workers and fellow mothers and gain from each other's experience you learn to find a direction to have a desired birth experience. You also get to meet birth workers absolutely free of cost. So if you are interested, please go ahead and fill the form in the show notes to register. And now we move ahead with our story. Hi, Aparna. Hi, Divya. Aparna, um, we just jump into your story and we'll begin... Um, from the time when you decided onto a birth center as against a conventional hospital, how did that decision come into being? Um, because it was pandemic, okay, and it was at the peak time, in fact. And not that I knew anything about natural birthing centers in India. So at 34th week, tuck, I had no idea of natural birth centers, nor even how I was going to birth because it was a very dicey situation. My mother lived abroad, so she had to come. So I would want to go to Kerala to be with her and, you know, in the comfort of, uh, you know, how these things work. Mm. But uh, um, my only thing that I knew from the beginning of my pregnancy was that I needed my husband around me wherever I was. So I needed to be in a facility that uh, would allow my husband to be around not because uh, I love him a lot and he needed to be there, but I felt that this journey was important for both of us together. I've heard from my mother that my dad was not there for both the births, like two of us. Uh, it didn't make him any less father for sure, but I feel like he may have looked at my mother differently if he had known that process a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere I feel that. Um, yeah. So I felt that need. Um, and the other thing I knew was not going into any fancy hospitals because I'm worried that I might have, I might be taking more um, medicines than I should, or I might be, yeah, I might have to stay back for no reason and things like that. So yeah, maybe more corporate than you uh, know. Yes. So I wanted to go to Kerala for that reason because in Kerala I come from a village and the hospitals there are very straightforward no fancy bills also mm. okay <laughs> and more of a normal birth rates in uh, smaller places yeah more, correct correct that yeah. too in fact i opted for the government hospital if possible i told my mother but government hospitals the labor ward is completely uh, made for made for covid 
so oh, that option okay. was not even there randomly i heard from a friend about birth village randomly and that i would say <laughs> was meant to be otherwise i don't know and, and village it was in kochi in... so yeah it was yes. it was in your plan it kind of fit well mm-hmm, correct it was uh, probably one and a half hours away from my home hmm. that's the best you can get how many uh, uh, natural birth centers do we have in india and considering that i think i was in a good proximity i couldn't have asked for more <laughs> uh, i had no idea about natural birthing centers until my 34th week can you believe that yeah i can believe yeah. you <laughs> most mothers <laughs> don't don't know that because we don't have that kind of a, that kind of an awareness around birth centers as much as the hospitals kind of are advertising it that kind of money that goes into um healthcare in the big hospitals and the way they are advertised but centers are still like small units run by independent men yeah yeah um, and they can't have that kind of uh, publicity because they can't cater to that much because it's skill based work it needs to have uh, an organic flow too yeah so at 34th week birth village lets me in by 30 uh, you have to go to them at least by 34th 35th week if i'm not wrong and um, i had a whole family to convince <laughs> about this uh, option of mine you know uh, mm-hmm. and when i heard of it i was 100% sure you know what it would be like for a mother who really wants to experience this and wants mm-hmm. to feel safe and it is a very intuitive thing for her to feel that a mother would never even though she knows all the stories and all the um, it's not hospital pretty much right but she still feels safe there right i don't know how just a promise of uh, a better promise of a natural birth so you you kind of yeah like you're saying your intuition the way you align works. with certain people it works you feel okay i want to go there and yes, more exactly. so in pregnancy yeah then there was two three weeks of me trying to convince my husband was okay he was convinced in the next one week Hmm. but uh, my mother was a war there <laughs> how did you how did you convince her just for the listeners to get some sort of a help from your story yeah i think it will help it was the same as anybody else would any mother would feel there is no doctor there is no uh, amenities a hospital would have how is it going to be safe for you if something went wrong So I think the most important thing that helped me convince my mother is and by the way she is the advocate of birth village right now so the transition was amazing but at that point um I told her my personal concerns but she was still not hearing it then I I wanted her to take it one step at a time so I told her let me just go with this option okay there was uh, birth birth classes happening so my mother would come and sit with me yeah and she heard a few things and i started explaining these things because i was learning relearning you know when i am explaining things to her i think i felt like a student right then go all like okay this is why amma they would do that we don't actually need this so you know why would anyone want to go through something like that so when i kept this these discussions started going on after a session you know how the sessions could be over a week every evening two three hours so every evening we would talk discuss and that kind of prepped her i feel those sessions and she started telling me it's true when i was giving birth to you the nurses were so mean they were just talking and eating their lunch and they would just ask me to shut up and not cry when i was going through pain and things and that she started sharing and these experiences she never shared to me like as horrible it was she just used to tell me this birthing you was a hell oh so because you didn't know the context very, you didn't know the context i didn't know the context i did not know anything other than that and i can imagine now in context with what i what i had and what she may have gone through uh and then she started sharing her it was so painful for me and nobody around me cared for me and things like that so somewhere she aligned with the idea of going in for birth labor she was shit scared i would not she was so scared when i was in labor she was so worried because it was another one and a half hours of drive amit was also worried amit used to ask me things like so when you're in labor and when i have to drive do you realize that i would be in stress so i'm like 
I know because you know how they are. They they just care about us, but they also want to know that uh, it's safe for him to take that chance. So I said, you just have to drive. There is time. So he also sat with the classes to know that there is time for us. It's not like an emergency. Not that I knew it, but I was just trusting all the uh, information that I was given with. And I just had to explain each time they had queries, like my mom and my husband, they had queries. So I had to keep explaining things and talk about other experiences that I had heard about, you know, exactly birth village experiences. So it was a lot of work for me. It was not an easy um, thing, but I will not complain. That had to be, that was a process. It was, and my husband would say, see, Aparna, this is not a traditional way of birthing. So these questions you have to answer for us. Mm -hmm. And I have to also answer his family. And, you know, a lot of, they are, they have doctors in their family. So it's not easy to. Mm -hmm. To have everybody yeah. on board and that very seamlessly, because sometimes we imagine that, okay, our family should come on very seamlessly, which is usually not the case for anybody. So um, I like the way you made it a process and you, the childbirth classes helped everybody kind of. So that that kind of is really, really helpful for everybody to know how you need to educate yourself and maybe even your family. So partners do come in. Partners are involved in childbirth classes. But parents, yeah. families, um, <clears throat> to have that sort of an understanding of why you're choosing what you're choosing rather than just giving them your decision, which is also okay. If sometimes nobody gets convinced, then you can have your own bubble and work with your own bubble. But otherwise, definitely, yeah. I remember the first meeting I had with Priyanka, ma'am. And I would say this might be resonating for every BV mother. One hour of session that was um, uh, the consultation with my husband. You know how we would have gone, like no information, a lot of doubts and a lot of... Most of them will have all these fears for sure. But... She explained every single thing to us. At the end, I like a like a like a child, you know, I went on like, I really want this for myself, but I'm not sure. Because both of our heads, Amit and I, both of our heads are not in the same space. I'm already, I want that lollipop. I'm convinced. <laughs> but yeah. this fellow is he just agreed to that first meeting. So, you know, uh, I still have yeah. work to do. So I told ma'am that. I'm going to try and talk this and figure it out. I really would like this for me, but I'm not really sure. So she could see that I'm not trying hard. And it concerns her that birth is my right. And she told me that, Aparna, it's your body. It's your birth. You have all the rights to choose it the way you want. It's whether or not you come to BV. The choices you make is yours and it has to be yours. Nobody else can decide it for you. You have to take that uh, on you. And that kind of changed a lot for me. That was the first moment I would say I felt empowered. Yes. And at yeah. every step, uh, the mother comes in the center of all the decisions she takes for herself and the baby. That's what women do not get. They're shushed in labor by other nurses in the hospitals and all of that it's sad it's... yes but when uh, the way you spoke about this bit no how how you are the center of everything i got to experience it like like no i don't know i if i would have had that chance i was the center i had um Three to four people around me constantly caring for and not interfering unnecessarily. They would leave me in the room with my husband to just have my time. This was like end of my um, active labor and all because pretty much most of the labor was at home. Yeah. How did the labor kind of begin? Did it begin on its own? What time was it? How many weeks were it? And um, was there any kind of diagnosis before that? You know, the general diagnosis mm. that... Women get, you have low amniotic fluid, the baby is big, the baby is small, and then probably tons of issues are brought in even before uh, the 40th week mark. Um, I I remember the entire pregnancy was healthy. There was nothing concerning. Maybe around my third trimester beginning, my hemoglobin was uh, low. And Priyanka, as I was seeking for an admission, uh, <laughs> she's wonderful <laughs> so she saw my she ran all the reports because covid nothing was really happening i was not 
I just moved from Bangalore to uh, Kerala and you know the 28 weeks, um, what do you call it? I forgot the name even. <laughs> you had to be at home, can't uh, get out. Quarantine, yes. Quarantine. Yeah, I was qu- quarantined and I could only do my test after and this was almost at the time when I had to meet Priyanka. And when she uh, saw my report, she told me, if you want to be with us, you need to work on your diet. You need to do your exercises. She was very clear. I'm pretty sure that's how that's her tone with everybody who comes in there. She's very clear about it's going to be work. So you have to do take care of your diet. If your levels are not up, I'm probably not going to let you in. Is what she said, and I know she didn't mean it. Mm-hmm. Just, <laughs> Just like she make yes, you do the work. Yeah. Yes, she doesn't want to think that it's uh, it's not my job; it's her job. She really wants me to be responsible for because that's the way. Uh, I think as a midwife, she is working with your mind also in preparation to when you have to do the labor. Hmm. It shouldn't be that the mother just gives up the work and just wants. Hmm. something else to take over right yeah, it yeah, can because happen because it yeah. happens tons of times in active labor that there is a point that mothers are like okay enough enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think yeah she was so, probably making sure that i'm earning that part of hmm. so my labor i i had a fine pregnancy except for the hemoglobin level and it came up in a week's time as promised and like a good student i uh, fixed that bit of my and it <laughs> problem. came up and it came up with diet changes just just diet nothing else what was extra what was the extra some herbs were included was it no it was the normal food but the veggies and the greens that's it <clears throat> nothing else that i did i don't i don't remember anything else just that it's beautiful how our body responds to these subtle little changes um mm. in everyday life and so mm. many things that can go here and there in pregnancy itself can be worked with diet and yes. sometimes we do not know that and we rely so much on medicine that we we just grab whatever we have been told and we don't look further correct so apart from that there was no other concern hmm. all i had to do was wait and i had weekly appointments no scans even for that matter there was no scan yeah. it was just uh, weekly appointments i went i met priyanka it was always her who was mm-hmm. there of course the appointments would change here and then with births it mm-hmm. was not easy to get an appointment there had been days when uh, amit and i would go to kochi which was one and a half hours and then we get to know she is not available and come back and yes those were the times we were like are we sure about this decision because what of you going to labor and you know she's not going to be around but i know exactly why she was not around because she went mm-hmm. to attend another labor and i knew exactly that's what she would do for me also mm-hmm. so i like the part where she was not available because there was another labor yeah. it was even more convincing that i will be taken care of mm-hmm. that just that everything was fine and uh, and how was um, and how was the prenatal uh, care on the weeks weeks so there were no scans right usually when you go to a regular medical um, care when i say medical care i mean when you sign up with a hospital um, you know there are a lot of scans that are run towards the end from 36 to 38 week especially there are one or two scans if you are around 40 and you are going to be beyond 40 which is very normal you still run on tests just to make sure that because you hit the 40th mark etc etc so because there were no scans which is great but how did the care then look like what all was done during those uh, meetings weekly meetings i only went for birth village much later in my pregnancy so mm-hmm. previous scans were that she wanted me to send all of it she mm-hmm. went through all of it and then the latest scan was right after my quarantine i had gone to the local hospital and i had that so that was the latest so i didn't have to do another scan for birth village mm. that was not needed mm. and then the weekly appointments i was checked the belly was checked measured and felt and you know she, she measured me, the fun yeah. height like with a with a scale yeah, so yeah. something i'm seeing it's not being done regularly in the hospitals um which which is a great um, assessment to a lot of this large baby small baby issue mm. that's out there um which is just based is based on a scan whereas a lot of your belly can tell 
whether yeah. you're actually way ahead or it's just a little difference which can be ruled out so yeah back then i did not know what she was doing but i just knew that she was uh, i mean she would tell me okay baby is here kicking here can you feel the no concerns even at 40th week there was no concerns hmm. like in fact the last week appointment got pushed also like and i was getting stressed oh no 40th week aa gaya now why are they not looking at me uh, but then uh, my appointment was that saturday the friday night i had the mucus plug removed Hmm. that had come off around 10 o'clock ish hmm. birth education classes no so i was hmm. like damn sure next few hours i'm giving birth because this first sign has happened now so i messaged my girl gang i'm the first one to get pregnant in the gang so they are all good for excited. nothing anyway yeah they're excited but <laughs> they don't excited. really know what's happening so i had to update them and i told them i am going to i started feeling the like contractions which in the beginning you feel like that's the biggest pain but uh, it i could manage easily by lying and walking and things like that a whole night i was awake of course and the anxiety of i am in labor am i in labor uh, that was not a, that was the one thing i would have wanted to change in my uh, hmm. experience of labor my anxiety to uh, um, reassure that this is labor or not and i i don't know maybe every first time mother go through yeah that bit yeah, yeah. but i didn't enjoy it now that i think of it that's probably what stalled my labor is what i feel uh, mm. i was supposed yeah it's a for, very interesting point to make because um, in the last few births with first time mothers that um i was assisted um there was a birth where uh, my my midwifery teacher um and we were discussing that um the early labor was really really early labor and the mother was like you're saying you know there is there is some sort of an anxiety and you want to work with it because you've learned so much about uh, mm-hmm. how to work with your labor so you start working with the lowest um you know when when i say lowest i shouldn't say that it's very different for different mother but when you start working on the earliest uh, little contractions and the earliest um the changes that you start feeling so you exhaust yourself in the process that is when your body gets tired and that's when all of this plays out later so it does yes. it does become longer wherein if you well rested and if you try and but that's not possible for everybody everybody is different and sometimes it's just it's just the way things work out but it's a very important point to note um um and and observe uh, that you know the early labor can actually just be ignored try it to completely ignored exactly it can be completely ignored just yesterday i was talking to my full term mother one of my full term mothers and i was just i do this conversation i call them up to to that conversation just so that they relax more i want them to not be anxious this one talk i do with all my mothers so i told her how are you feeling she's like all good i told her, she told me how she was work, winding up her work i told is that stressing you she said no absolutely not in fact the only thing that i'm stressed about is i'm scared if i'll miss my labor uh-huh. if i would actually be in labor and i may not even know that i'm in labor that was That's a different a kind thing. of uh, <laughs> i mean that is a good thing but that yeah. was giving her anxiety she told yeah. me that was the stress she was going through mm-hmm. that's a very different way of stressing uh, and i ensure you will not you will not miss your labor <laughs> you can't miss your labor so that like you mentioned not that that's not something we can change for a new mother we can work on it for sure we can give assurances uh, the supporting uh, team that she would have like her birth educator or yoga trainer or doula or whoever she is working with they can make a difference for sure yeah. one thing i tell my full term mothers don't even try to have that app don't even download that contraction yeah. app just tell your husband just wait you have hours together to even know if it is uh, regular or not so don't even stress about it they actually start doing it and then half way through they give up because there is no pattern pretty much in pre labor so i tell them it's fine it's just it's the way it is you can sleep through two days i i even say two days three days just so that they will yeah. really know when it is active and when it is real labor right but yes. yeah they will only know it when they actually go through it and then they may not uh, trust the other person because 
they might confuse the back pain with the real pain and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, that's that's how uh, you kind of mentioned the kind of support you have. Somebody to just guide you. Okay, are you feeling sleepy? Sometimes mothers are sleepy and they wouldn't sleep because they are just trying to assess something else. And somebody to just tell you, okay, go go to sleep. that bit of a um, somebody there to help you um, that kind of changes everything so that's really significant something that you've brought in to experience that now when i am in this space of work like i'm working uh, i i know more about it and i advocate this to every student of mine uh, but i also have heard from my own students how horrible things have been for them it's not fair it's really not fair in the conventional hospitals it's just not the same understanding approach towards birth let's say uh i mean yeah when i say this i would um i'm i'm i can cry about this actually to tell a mother who is in her early labor when she is having to go through her pv examinations you've heard this probably you can't take this how are you going to give birth to a child and that's such a wrong thing to say in that moment especially when she might you know when she is in labor and that's exactly the opposite of what you should do to her now we know about it now i know yeah. about it yeah, yeah yeah the hospitals can't change the way the staff is trained can't change the way they've seen births can't change they don't even know that you the the entire passage is receptive to the passage from where the baby comes out is very receptive to what you're telling the mother they don't realize that it's not that they're against you having a normal cesarean birth for them you're just another person who's sitting there wasting their time to them it feels that you should have known everything as if you've birthed 200 times especially first time mothers are tormented by the lack of support that they get yeah like for the pelvic floor examination it's basic if you do not take my consent to enter my body my body in its defense would stop you very basic they don't get that and that's the basis of birth a loving space will help the mother open that passage just like in intimacy but somebody telling you that you're not you're not worthy to give birth just because you're not able to let someone in which is the way she she her body is very capable which is why it's stopping you because she's scared of you she doesn't like you you need to be out of here now exactly now i'll tell you how i had my pv examination i had it mm-hmm. only twice mm-hmm. my midwife would prepare my body she'll bend my knees and i'm lying on my back and she would touch my knees and she, if she would have already asked my permission we have to do pv now can i and she would prepare my body and she touch my knees i am touching you is this okay for you then she'll touch my inner thighs is this okay for you and then she's putting her fingers into me saying after now i'm putting my fingers that was one finger you're fine you're okay the very question that are you fine just changes everything yeah oh! more receptive you're like okay i'm safe uh, whatever is happening and i have the time to ready myself to be relaxed down there than to just I can't imagine what mothers who may have had that experience what they may have gone through it's wrong to one of the mothers where the gynecologist was a uh, male um I think that that must have factored in I feel but despite that as well like even if it's despite the gender uh she said that I felt the way I was raped it was in pregnancy that it was done just because so someone felt that this needs to be done it's it's a whole together another story that how little how little um, i mean the number of times it needs to be done is so little mm-hmm. um and the number of times routinely it's being done to women is so much it's abusive it it already you know they're getting this notion in their pregnancy that they are not capable because they can't let a finger in no you are capable because you don't that don't want that thing your body is working perfectly fine and that kind of a wisdom is not brought in and how did you feel there after like um um 
you know the the exam and everything you you didn't didn't feel bad about it right you still felt safe no that's why i said it was i i'm only comparing it now after i'm hearing the other stories from my students hmm. uh, for me it was not it, it i just had it twice and that two in labor and not before that yeah of course in the onset of labor when i almost thought i'm in active labor and when i went the first time so my story goes like that right the first time i go in i was only 2 cm dilated and i was sent back so that was one time i was checked and the next time was uh much uh, when i went back again so that's it yeah and, and then mm-hmm. one last time probably uh when i had the stalling of labor that was one mm-hmm. more yeah just that's it that's all so um coming back to like your story where you were like uh telling us that um okay the prenatal care and then um you, the mucus plug broke and then you were in early labor and then how long were you at home and uh, before you decided to okay go so through that night friday night and saturday early morning i didn't sleep same reason as mentioned before i was hmm. wanting it to be real labor and i was observing it too closely and making sure it is regular and i kept messaging through the night uh, to priyanka she was around she was around at 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 4 o'clock 5 o'clock a message away my mm-hmm. god <laughs> and uh, i was like a baby and she was she was checking on me i was writing to her i had an appointment at 10 o'clock at birth village and i mentioned my um, contractions were 5 minute apart now it was 5 minute mm-hmm. apart actually uh and she told me okay if you think you want to come and get uh, assist come if you feel like you want to come come you know uh i at 6 o'clock in the morning my husband and i started off one and a half hour during traffic hours one hour ish during the early morning hours thank mm-hmm. you now i'm in the car contractions are going on it was almost 2 minutes apart 1 minute uh, contractions like active labor hmm. and then i go and priyanka is ask i mean i reached the parking lot and priyanka is asking me do you want me to send you a wheelchair because she is assuming that i am in labor active and i need support i told no no i'm fine you know i wanted to be the matcha who can hmm. i can do this like i'm ready for labor like give me labor Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah said. i want to do this yeah i'm excited yeah i don't need a wheelchair i'm going to birth my baby just fine you know mm. like so confident i was that's strong that's <laughs> so strong yeah and i go in and the team was there waiting for me uh, as i enter they do my pv i was only 2 cm dilated mm. and priyanka told me right when i was leaving the premises i knew you were not in real labor because if you were my dear darling you wouldn't be able to walk on your own and reach upstairs so she and you wouldn't be the one texting me it would have been amit you can't be picking up your phone and messaging me i mean she has seen so many labors so she knows to make the right judgment and midwives are very intuitive yes they know we work they on know. intuition yeah and not numbers and not everything which is why with midwifery model the rate of normal births are more because a lot of it is intuition because maybe all your numbers everything was okay but there are mothers who still have uh, towards the end may may have may go into an emergency where everybody needs to amp up and start working with it and there might be a case where everything seemed okay high risk high risk high risk and oh perfect perfect labor perfect baby everything is absolutely so that bit of a risk that you know risk when when i say risk it's not really a risk it's a calculated understood being aware of and giving that amount of time and space to a birth to be able to sit with you when things seem oh my god maybe textbook by textbook when you go for example your labor by textbook was pretty much active one minute duration five minutes apart very textbookish active labor but sometimes it looks so different for different mothers that um yeah that there are so many other factors to understand where they that's why they work so personally with the person they have to have that connect they take an effort to spend that one hour 
every meet like every prenatal appointments that one hour of talking and discussing and cheerful conversation it is uh, i've never uh, gone into priyanka's office no she say how are you she starts with that and then we are sitting together for an hour and she has a lot of appointments mm-hmm. waiting out and i may have already waited for at least half an hour you know mm-hmm. that but she gives the time the mother needs probably that's her way of establishing the relationship yes yes working even connecting her intuition in that with that family with that mother with that child for that matter yeah. i think this is her way of working and yeah. it you can see that in labor too you can it would it be. would play out very differently if the person if anybody new or a new set of you know you see the nurse for the very first time and you don't know her you don't know her personality you just you as a person do not have any loving connection with that person and birth is an intimate loving private space just just like intimacy is very private way where you have to have a loving space and you can't have that generally you can't have that with a stranger and your body would be defensive as an animal to a stranger as against somebody you worked so long with you do have a connection and that connection is important for birth to unfold the way it does very true i was also given my midwife's number priyanka definitely she is the main midwife but there was also another midwife her name is ani hmm. uh, from the beginning of my admission to birth village uh, she messaged me she called me and she said i'm here if you need anything and she sent me a few checklist to take care of and she was the one who would tell me if there is anything that happens in the next uh, course of time write to me like just message so that is just assurance they know that i'm not going to go into labor at 36 weeks you know but it's just assurance that you need something message away call away that because priyanka could be busy so there is always another person if i need it any backup. kind of concern yeah. yeah so it also makes uh, sense that uh, you were heard even though her intuition must have said that okay you're not in active labor but since you wanted to come that exactly. space was provided you exactly. were exactly you were heard and that bit of a um, uh, that bit of an understanding that birth is very different for different people and mm. it it doesn't follow a standard a rule. Mm. a rule so to hear the mother and know that she is the one who's again at the center of it so to hear her and give her the space and then assess and then come to so that's beautiful in itself to take that amount of effort with every True. mother yes in fact when i stepped in at 6 7 o'clock to the uh, hospital uh, the center everybody the team was ready everybody was there and they were ready to take me it was not like okay let her come we'll check it's not going to be labor we'll send her back no if it is they are there they're ready checked me and said um they only take in if you are at least 6 cm dilated mm-hmm. they don't uh, they don't it's everywhere even in sanctum it's the same 6 cm dilation you should have had only there so oh, please please explain advice, uh, please explain why do you think that mothers should stay home as much as is possible in early labor because this is something even i have to explain to my mother so it would be lovely to have your perspective on it early, early labor is the hardest the longest and mm-hmm. most manageable also and she would progress faster mm-hmm. if she is in her comfortable place just like cats go under the bed during labor for i mean it's it's just easy for her to relax in her premises uh this example of i mean if if we decide okay labor has started and it's in the beginning and you step out of your house that very moment you step out of your house when you leave that comfortable space anxiety kicks in and this is going to make it difficult for the oxytocin and the right hormones to flow into your body and the moment it's just like uh everything stops you know that that uh, continuity stops and early labor it's easier to stall it 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 can it can it can even stall and not not pick up at all also 
Mm -hmm. The moment you step out of the house, the moment you get inside the car, you see a traffic jam. It changes everything. I mean, you're no longer in labor. Whereas, if you may have stayed at home and watched a movie and snapped on something and hugged your husband, you probably would have had like at least three to four hours of less labor, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We don't have any evidence to prove this. But yeah. um, uh, it accelerates the labor and progresses in the right pace. Just staying at home and I don't know, it's actually nice to be at home and you have the control that, okay, I'm in labor and you are laboring just fine. Uh, you will start believing because we all, our ancestors gave birth at home, right? So we, At least we get to taste a bit of it uh, and have that uh, autonomy on our bodies like, okay, yeah. I know what I'm going through. I'm just in control of the situation and I would say that's the best time to spend with your partner. Yes, that's so that's so important to say, to have that space where you can be together. Uh, probably one of the, um, because after the baby comes in, a lot changes. So yes. yeah, to have that kind of an intimate space with your partner at length without any sort of disturbance. <laughs> it's just beautiful and it, it works in favor of the labor because it, like you said, oxytocin clicks in the love hormone and I mean, I mean, this is the only time I think about animals, you know, how beautifully they just know where to go and where to be. And my dog had uh, labored. I mean, she gave birth at home. That was my first uh, labor experience. <laughs> <laughs> I was her midwife and it was amazing to see how beautifully she could do it. The first, she was the first time mom, right? She gave birth just fine. The only comfort she took was me. She, I, I mean, I don't know what I could have done, but I would just be sleeping next to her and giving her all the rubs and oh my god I remember her in labor so um, yes early labor I advocate for this to anybody stay at home chill I mean I've heard baby mother stories where in which they would go for movie theater because yes it makes more sense to do all the things you may want to do because for the next 3-4 months you're not probably going to be able to do any of it last minute shopping all of this, really. Yeah. But in my case, um, hmm. because Priyanka told me that, um, you know, you will know when you're really in labor and things like that. So I went back home, no labor pain anymore. The whole morning, Saturday morning, I was just resting and sleeping and nothing much happened. Hmm. Afternoon again. So it contact. did kind of stall? Stalled. Like you felt nothing thereafter? No. We discuss the rest of the details of our laboring journey in the next episode, which comes out next weekend. So stay with us. There is a field beyond fear where the body is empowered to take on labor and birth. To land there, it is crucial to take birth education. To enroll into our unique labor and birth preparation course, reach out to us at www.birthagni.com or scroll through all available prenatal and postnatal preparation classes. Thank you for listening. All in the spirit of birth, womanhood and freedom. Remember, you got the bar. This podcast is about physiological birth and does not offer or claim to provide medical knowledge or diagnosis.